Okay, great. Well, again, thank you so much. It's, it's a real pleasure to, to be a part of One Million Cups. And uh, my wife and I have been so for the last couple of years. It's a great organization. Uh, today, I just want to share what we're doing. Um, this, again, our company is called iOpen Innovations and um, founded by my wife and I. And really, our mission is uh, to provide remote monitoring that keeps you aware on your terms and uh and that's really you know by what you want to know not bothering you but giving you the information that you really really want to know at a time that you want to know it. uh we're focused on two areas one is on hospitality and the other is on uh, food and beverage uh we are going to talk about hospitality today and what we're building and so let's just jump in so uh, the original company we, we founded actually in 2016, and we started with this big vision and we wanted to really change the world. And, and you know, by, by, by doing so in the process somewhere, <laughs> we found our why. Actually, our why came to us. And uh, I'll explain that uh, here in just a second. And, and really, this is, I think, a, Pretty common process for all startups and for all entrepreneurial ventures. You see A to B, and you see that with the idea and your, your idea really changing the world for better, but somewhere in the middle, that's where the magic happens. And same for us. So how that happened was we have a friend, uh, she is an ER surgeon, and she was looking at what we were building, uh, which was um, automation an automation system for hotel rooms. Now she said uh, she had a really uh, simple request and that was, I really just wanna know that no one is in my room, my hotel room when I open the door. So that caught me off guard and it really uh, led to us researching. And in 2019, um, we made a major pivot and changed the company, basically restarted the company in 2019. And that's what I wanna show. Uh, to you guys. Essentially, there are three pro, uh, three challenges that we're, um, we're going after. Uh, the first is the unknown. And did you know that 90% uh, of women business travelers don't feel safe when they travel? We also have a threat of COVID-19. Now that's subsiding, it seems, but it's still out there. And there are, you know, potential of other viruses as well. And my personal favorite, which is the unexpected. Knock, knock, and I'm always in the middle of something. Man, I've been there so many times. Um, so how do we solution this? So we're providing a solution that works really on both sides of the door, on the guest side, as well as on the hotel side. So as a guest, I can see that my room is uh, safe while I'm out. I can see that, uh, let's say housekeeping comes in at three, I know. And this instills confidence with comfort, with the comfort of knowing. Now on the hotel side, this is important because it builds efficiency in a smart way. They know that a guest is in the room or not before they knock. So they can, um, they can coordinate much better around guests. So what's different? So as a hotel, we actually um, provide, is there room presence? Is there someone in the room or not? And this is important because uh, it helps, like I said, hotel coordination. The systems that hotels commonly use is called a PMS, a property management system. They show if a room is booked and even if the guest is checked in, but they don't tell you uh, if someone is inside the room or not. So, so what we can this do is uh, improving on something. We're not reinventing the wheel, we're just making it a little bit better um, and safer. So some of the uh, technology behind it is it's, it's ultra safe, it's ultra secure. Um, we're providing this as a wireless uh, environment. So there's no drilling, there's no cabling, there's no ethernet. It's all wireless. The gateways plug into a common outlet and have a, uh, 
as as long as uh, as much as a 60 hour battery backup. So if the power fails, and this has happened um, in in hotels, if the power fails, our system still works and it still notifies other guests in rooms. If there's an emergency in the hotel, we our system still works. So these are some key features uh, that we provide. One of the key selling points that I bring up is that we're not really competing, but we're complementing. So we're letting hotels know, hey, that door, that guest door, it, it closed, but it didn't latch. So maybe in the summer, there's more humidity and those doors get sticky. So we can tell the hotel, hey, there may be a security issue here. Go check the door. Um, temperature and humidity, these are big things. Uh, rooms can be left at a very high temperature uh, without anyone in there or very low temperature in the summer. Humidity is interesting. There's a couple of studies coming out of um, Harvard, uh, Yale, and Virginia Tech that show that humidity levels between 40 and 60 percent actually work to slow the spread of COVID. And you would be surprised how many hotel rooms are actually very, very dry. The last thing I want to say is we are working on for the staff a panic button. And this is key because if staff run into situations that they need help with, and that happens, believe me, a lot, um, that panic button is a one touch button and they call for assistance and, and help comes. So in a nutshell, our benefits, you can see here, I won't go into too much detail, but we're really trying to provide a service of awareness so hotels can see that operation, how it affects it. It affects a lot, labor productivity, coordination, how things run better, um, maintenance, um, food and beverage. We, we're actually getting huge response, positive response uh, from food and beverage. Uh, from the hotel, they, they love that. Um, and the last thing I'll say is, we believe there's three areas that this is really going to impact. And that's environmental monitoring. So you save, uh, basically you save energy, uh, staff communication, so that gives you better uh, eyes on, while uh, keeping absolute guest privacy. And then there's a huge social impact that we're excited about that's going to make your stay safer and better and improve your life. So that's what we're building uh, as I open innovations. Um, yeah, and just three key things is I uh, would love any introductions or, um, um, yeah, just any introductions into hotels or restaurants, uh, word of mouth, a warm uh, introduction is so much better than just a cold call. Um, angel investors or mentors, uh, we're always listening and listening and listening more and asking for advice and direction. And last, any uh, entrepreneurial minded talent, uh, developers, UX designers, uh, we're open to that as well. So thank you so much for this time. I will, um, I will be quiet and uh, let questions. If anyone has questions, be happy to, uh, to answer. Yes. Thank you, Don. This is, this is really cool. So it just seems like you're making, you're making safety and awareness smarter than ever. Right. That, thank that, you. Is that really kind of what did I capture that in a nutshell where like you're bringing the AI, the technology, uh, and bringing that to safety and awareness where it wasn't there before. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the key here is, is providing insight while protecting that privacy. So we, we're trying to find that balance. I think we've, we're getting pretty close to, to providing, to finding that. Got it. Uh, question from Denny, what do you charge for this and are you targeting major chains or uh, the independents? Uh, great question. So right now we're not really looking at major chains. Uh, there's a few hurdles that are uh, a bit hard for us to, to get over right now. So we are mostly targeting independent hotels and um, uh, small boutiques. Um, we're working with a, a wonderful hotel in downtown Nashville, uh, beautiful place. Um, yeah, the price point is about average. Uh, we, we don't have any direct competitors. We're a first mover in this, but um, 
the ones that are close to us were at their price or slightly below. Okay. And uh, Tammy wants to know, how does your occupancy monitoring work? How does that work? Oh, sure thing. So we use a couple of sensors in rooms. Um, we use a combination, basically, of PIR, which is passive infrared, uh, which that, that's a great sensor for keeping that, that privacy in the room. Um, how that works is, uh, you know, we each, as, as, as humans, as we move around, we create a certain amount of energy. Uh, and, and it sends out, if you will, a bit of a wave. Can't see it, can't feel it, but but it's there. Well, these sensors pick up that energy and pick up that wave, and they detect it as motion. So it's ultra private. We don't use cameras. We don't use heat maps. We don't use uh, IR. So we use a passive uh, infrared, which really detects and just sits there. Um, until something hits it. Um, the, the other couple of things that we detect is uh, temperature and humidity uh, in the room. And that, that's important for the, the uh, building itself. Um, last thing is we do uh, put door sensors uh, so that we can tell if the door is ajar, if it's latched, and uh, that, that just provides more security. Got it. Uh, you mentioned you're a first mover, and this I think this leads into Denny's question, which I'm going to ask in a second here. Uh, but have you considered uh, creating a standard for the industry for safety? Like you become the standard. You're the good housekeeping seal of approval, or you're that standard that everyone adopts through associations uh, because you are bringing something uh, unique and a new level of awareness. So why shouldn't you set the standard? And then, of course, you're the you're the first mover on that. But Denny's question is along the same lines of, um, have you approached major hotel lodging associations? Uh, but I, again, I would approach them if you can with a standard maybe. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's a, that's a great question. Uh, we are building a standard. We are the first mover. Uh, we've reached out to several organizations, uh, AHLA, which is the American Hotel Lodging Association. They're one of the largest. Uh, they do have, I believe, the largest presence in D.C. So they're highly involved in um, uh, legislation and, and making sure that they're, they're, they're great organization for defending hotel workers and hoteliers. Um, and that goes across the, the board from chains to independence. Uh, great organization. We, we know uh, we've met Chip, uh, the CEO. Uh, and and um, so and, and also we're, we're uh, involved in local groups here. So the North Texas Hotel Association, we're also members of. So a uh, big believer in that. Absolutely. Good, good. Yeah, because a lot of associations, they won't um, endorse companies, but they will adopt mm -hmm. standards. And hey, if you're the standard, great. Uh, so uh, there's actually a, and, and Eric brings up a good point, Eric Deckers. Uh, there's a, a local independent kind of chain of hotels called Rosen Hotels. Mm -hmm. And I know someone here, I, I, don't, I don't know Mr. Rosen himself, my in-laws, are familiar with them, but it's definitely something we need to get you a contact there to get you into the Rosen Hotel chain because it's a very it's a locally owned, uh, really good, really good guy. Um, would, that owns uh, we all would that. appreciate that. Yeah, we would appreciate that. We're actually going to be in Sarasota uh, in June at the Hotec show. Perfect. Uh, Mark's got a good question. So the passive IR requires motion. So if someone's sleeping, how does it detect if someone's already sleeping in the room when he returns? Uh, how does that work? I love that question. Um, I get that all the time. So we put a couple of different PI sen PIR sensors in there. So we do, uh, our approach is to do kind of a AB. So if this one triggers and then that one triggers, then we know someone is in the room. If, um, yeah, if, if this one triggers, but there's no door opening, then we know someone's moving around and they went, you know, laid down for a nap or reading a book. So, so there's a couple of different ways that we try and detect that presence and try and um, make sure, validate that, that there is someone in the room. We actually are working with the University of Texas in Dallas right now. We have a couple of student groups that are helping us um, develop this algorithm and this proof. These are young people who have brilliant minds. I love our students. Um, they bring a lot of 
fresh look in, into this and uh, how to prove that. So yeah, I hope that answers your question. Now, that makes sense using logic and a little bit of AI in there. Uh, so mm -hmm. Yale's question is, have you marketed through any hotel trade shows? I think you mentioned maybe doing some, some trade shows, right? Yeah, yeah. So we're going to be at, at Hotec, which is uh, really a, a trade show targeted on hotel buyers. There's a lot of chains and independents at this, at this show uh, that's happening in June, first time that we'll be there. We're also involved in the HFTP organization, which is a great organization nationally, and they put on a show called uh, High Tech, which is the uh, hotel technology show. It's the largest of, in the world for that. So a uh, great show was there last year, first time they floored since COVID last year. So uh, yeah, we are definitely, that's probably the, um, the, the most visible way that we get in front of hotels. Uh, there's a couple of others, but yeah, the, the great shows out there. Awesome. And, and Eric has a very important question, our, our creative genius in the group here. He's imagining some sort of uh, James Bond scenario where a beautiful spy is waiting for you uh, in your room. And you just want to say, does this happen a lot? Is this a common scenario? <laughs> you know, we have, we have a story. I'll, I'll tell a story in about uh, 10 seconds here. So um, true story. Uh, one of our neighbors told us this. Uh, her and her husband was in Chicago in a hotel a few years back. They went to dinner. And when they came back to their room, someone was in their room. It was a lady, uh, um, somewhat uh, um, influenced by alcohol. And she had apparently taken a shower or was about to and dressed only in a towel. So as you can imagine, the wife, as she was telling us the story, she said, it's a good thing for my husband. I really trust him. Um, but yeah, there, there's stuff happens like that. Uh, long story short, the police got involved and they had to have the lady, uh, escorted out. Um, come to find out she had asked housekeeping to let her in the room and she just by chance picked their room, no key, no registration. Uh, and she, and she just simply told housekeeping, Hey, uh, I left my key, uh, in my room. Can you, can you open the door for me? And she got in. Now, with our system, let's say these folks are having dinner. With our system, they get a text message. Hey, your, your room just uh, was just entered. Um, is that you? And, of course, they're going to say, no, that wasn't us. Well, then that alerts the hotel, and then that, uh, that whole security protocol can kick in before they ever finish dinner. So that's part that's of what cool. we're providing. That's cool. How much of this is defendable? Is is either patented? What kind of IP is around this, uh, or is this purely going to be a first to market branding kind of play and and trying to set the standard? Yeah. So you know the the original the first steps are definitely first to market, um, and and really proving the point. Uh, that, that our next phase that we're going to be entering uh, this year is to. Uh, is to develop a patent. There's a patent on technology, and there's also a process that we're looking at as well. So patents are definitely coming, uh, that's for sure. I think, I think it, it may be fair to say though, at the end of the day, um, you know, just, just providing a good service, I think is the best defense. And, and you know, I suspect that we make it uh, welcome in to a larger company at some point, uh, maybe bot, uh, and you know, that would be, that'd be just fine for us. That, that was my next question. Would you be, would, would you be mad if, uh, is there an exit strategy here where maybe a, a bigger chain does just say, Hey, I like you. And I, I, I the answer is I would be terribly mad and all the way to the <laughs> bank. So, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, and that, and that is the exit strategy. Um, we would love to be acquired by a larger company. We, we, do, we have actually talked to a couple and they're watching us and they're watching our progress. So, uh, you know, there, yeah, there's a, there, that will happen. Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, well, the faster you, you, the faster you go, the better then, because it, it needs to be more profitable for them to buy you than to duplicate you. Uh, exactly. Right, so uh, what, can you go into a little more detail about your business model? How, how does that work? Who's, I think the hotels pay for it, right? Uh, that is correct. Yeah, thank you for asking that. Uh, very simple model. 
uh, we front the uh, equipment cost. Uh, we fold that into a subscription model. So uh, it's it's a subscription to the hotel, free for the guests. There's no downloads, nothing to download, no apps to install. Everything is in the cloud. So for guests, it starts working when they check in. It stops working when they check out. For hotels, it works in a web browser, responsive web browser, uh, on their phone, on a tablet, on their laptop. Uh, and, and there's really nothing to install. So everything is in the cloud. Um, yeah, and, and I think I also want to say it's a bit, uh, it, it has, it lends itself to being uh, fractionalized. So if the hotel wants the entire service, they can get the entire service. If they want a part of that or kind of a mixed bag of services, they can get that too. There's a hotel, beautiful hotel. It's probably the most technically advanced hotel in the world. Even a look at Dubai and some of those hotels. This is an amazing place. It's in a hundred year old building just over in Fort Worth, Texas. And um, I've talked to them a few times, know the owner and uh, he's, and, and their sales guy says, you know, we love only this one piece. Could we get only this piece of your, of your, uh, your service? And I said, absolutely you can. So, yeah, We're, we try to be flexible. Any limit on scalability here? No, I think, you know, looking at, so logistics is the, this key to scalability. Uh, we answer that with uh, local service guys, installers. Uh, you know, we're, uh, each major city uh, will have uh, associated like, installers. There are actually companies in the industry that, that focus primarily on um, technology and, and doing integration for hotels. Uh, there's a couple of big ones out there. So we feel pretty confident that as we scale, um, that won't be a roadblock for us. Okay. And, and Mark wants to know, is the hotel guest access to your service uh, through the hotel website? or your website? So it, it, yeah, that's a great question. So we're looking at a couple of different options there. Primarily the, the best option that we found is integrating with the hotel property management system so that it knows when a guest checks in. So the guest will get a text message from our system. We brand to the hotel. So it looks like the hotel is reaching out to the guest. We promote that brand and we really do a lot uh, to, to make sure the guest has a confidence in the hotel. So uh, that's one way uh, through either text messaging or email. Another, um, another way or another path that we're looking at is using QR codes and putting QR codes in the room. So when the guest checks in, it's on their terms. Of course, the guest has the option to, um, to accept or decline the service. Uh, we're also, we, we just got a request from another wonderful hotel. Um, we got a request to hide rooms. So uh, in this particular hotel, they have celebrities who, who stay there quite often. And when they stay there, they want the ability to, to close the room and not, not show when they're in the room or not. This is something that we never thought about, but, but that, that was a, an ask a couple of weeks ago. So we're going to also uh, provide that in the service as well. Oh, you're gonna love the next presentation too then as well. Um, so, uh, well here, Mark has a question. So, so how easy is it to integrate your software and hardware uh, to each hotel that you service? Is it a simple API? It's basically like that or even ba more basic? No, it's, so we're really trying to, to have, um, uh, two solutions. One is a complete autonomous solution where we just drop in and we have a separate autonomous system. We don't use the hotel Wi-Fi. We uh, bring our own hardware. Like I said, it's just a simple sensor. Just uh, use sticky tape on the back, tap it on the wall. Uh, everything is already pre-configured. Um, that's one, one approach. The other approach is to in integrate pull in those APIs uh, from the hotel itself. Uh, hotels can use a couple different systems for housekeeping, maintenance, and then for their operations. Uh, so um, yeah, I hope I answered the question there. So it is uh, pretty simple. Uh, it is, as long as we have that API uh, from the hotel, we can integrate at a software uh, level. I will note, uh, we are members of HDNG as well. So 
um, which is the Hotel uh, Next Generation uh, organization. They, we are working on a standard. Basically, there are 400 types of PMS uh, out there for hotels. Uh, we're working on a standard that allows one single door and you'll uh, come through that API and be able to talk to all of them. So there's some really big, big, big things happening at a technology level that are going to improve the, the stay of hotels. We're going to see that next level uh, begin to hit in the next few years. So, Perfect. And Scott wants to know what level of uh, what contact within a hotel are you looking to approach? Uh, CIO, CTO, engineering, procurement, the manager, uh, what? What level? What position? Yeah, yeah. So, so you know, I've I've made introductions on every level. Uh, we are working with uh, hotel advisors as we can. We would love to talk with folks who have industry experience. Uh, we do have a, a very good uh, hotel advisor. Uh, help us. He's helping us to open the doors. Typically, we talk to owners, uh, especially independent hotels have groups. There may be five, six hotels in a group. Um, yeah, so we try to talk to owners or managing directors. Once we get the handshake and that, that trust established, then we start talking to the, um, the building engineer, uh, you know, the uh, uh, director of, of rooms, uh, general managers, the, uh, yeah, that side of it, the, the uh, CIO. So, so, yeah, we really try to make that initial contact with the, with the owner. And, you know, I think you're onto something here. This is very necessary, safety-wise, awareness-wise. It's simple. It's smart. So I got to ask this question then. Three years from now, it's dead. You're out of business. It all failed. What happened? What's that, what's oh, that, we had a what's blast. that biggest risk? You had a blast, of course, but what, what killed the business? Like, if you can, if you just, let's, let's do a pre-mortem. Let's predict ahead. Yeah. What, what is it that could possibly completely kill this? Um. Boy, that's a good question. We, we, we just went through something that killed it, uh, you know, two years ago. Uh, you know, we, we made a major pivot in 2019. We had great momentum. Uh, members of the International Hotel Association had a great show there in Miami. And we're, we're just, we've got that momentum. We're going into the market. And all of a sudden, our market, literally billion, multi-billion dollar market disappeared in front of us within two weeks. We, you know, my, my job became, instead of building this product, how do we survive? Uh, we're self-funded. Uh, my wife and I put uh, actually not a small amount of our money uh, into this. So we're big believers. If it fails, um, it, it would probably be something like that. Probably, uh, you know, the, I, I don't know. I, I don't want to get into the future, uh, you know, so much. I, I have no idea. Uh, but. There are many things that could, I think, um, kill the market. Um, but there, there are technologies that are out there that I'm sure uh, might kill this. I haven't thought of what that is. And, uh, you know, that's, that's the thing about the future. You really can't tell. Our best defense is getting into hotels, providing a service that's reliable and that they want. Um, the interesting thing about hotels is once you get in with them, and it's very difficult to get in with them, but once you do, they're loyal, they like you, they're going to stick with you, probably they will, they will step over another technology uh, that's different, maybe even better, um, to go with you. And so they're a very slow uh, decision maker, and they're very, um, they're very loyal, I think, to a good to a good vendor. Yeah, yeah. And, and the question is just a thought experiment to mm. uh, help mitigate risk. So if if you could go back in time, would you have done something different? And then you can apply that moving forward. So it's just a just one of mm -hmm. those that sometimes it's worth asking when things look too good. And, you know, when things are like, wow, this is amazing, this is awesome. Let's not just get, let's not start, you know, smelling our stuff yeah. too much. Let's make sure we we keep it, uh, start, start thinking about some things that could happen. So yeah, I have to send I, it over absolutely. to, I've got to send Eric back to our final question. All right, Don, thank you very much. Uh, the final question is, what can we as a community do for you? 
Yeah, um, we. I mean, we're we're always looking for uh, mentors for uh, folks who understand the process of uh, funding. Um, we're looking for talent, uh, entrepreneurial minded talent. Uh, plenty of room to grow. I've got an interview tomorrow with uh, data scientists uh, and and any kind of introductions. Uh, you know, we we also provide uh, freezer. Um, monitoring for restaurants uh, so yeah yeah any um uh, we're, we're pretty open our emails there uh qr code is there for a survey uh we're pretty easy to get a hold of so i hope that helps all right yeah it does thank you very much and uh, uh it's good to hear from you uh, i'm going to share my screen again real quick uh, and say that we are going to welcome Yale Schwartz of Yale and Schwartz uh, to talk about uh, his, uh, I guess, customer experience uh, solution and, and whatnot. <laughs> I kind of lost my train of thought there. But Yale, uh, you've talked to us before about what you do. So uh, what, what has been happening since the last time you talked to us? Well, Thank you, Eric, and, and I truly appreciate the opportunity to, to be here and, and to share with you. Just wanted to, uh, yes, I'm still involved in things, everything involving customer experience. I mean, that, that's what it comes down to at the end of the day. It, it's all about the customer experience. And so today, what I want to talk about is a little bit from the standpoint of utilizing that customer experience and thinking about it and I hope you could see my screen at this point in time, you know, does every business need a true differentiator from that sea of sameness? Then welcome to creating a customer journey. So my objective today is to piggyback a little bit of what Don was just mentioning, but to show how a technological platform can truly create a unique customer journey for any organization, which will deliver a one of a kind customer experience because that's what it all comes down to. As Maya Angelou once said, I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Those experiences are the most important part as it truly leaves that lasting impression for someone. But we have a problem. We have a customer experience problem, which truly troubles me as a lifetime advocate of customer service. So based on recent survey results, conversations, and what we all have experienced over the last few years, yes, business is starting to rebound, but still many are struggling, especially in dealing with the decay of customer experience for handling current demands. Customers have their, you know, have lots of needs and wants but they're waiting in never ending lines. They want information available at all times, not to wait for an attendant to maybe show up. The turnover and hiring process has created a less informed staff who are in true needs of quick tools for training. And business closures, they've just made it difficult to get product and really even information about that particular product. So as Peter Forbes said, stories create community, enable us to see through the eyes of other people and open us to claims of others. It's important that you share your stories with one another and demonstrate how you put purpose into action every day. By storytelling, it provides an emotional and often entertaining snapshot of how you care. So today, Eric and everyone, I wanted to talk about Eli technology, which can help bridge the gap with those stories in order to promote your brand, educate consumers about your products or services, and take them to exactly where you want them to go at any time they desire that information. So why Eli Technology now? Simply, it's to overcome the problems in the marketplace by utilizing that electronic leash that we're all attached to, our smartphones. It will drive companies to create a better customer experience journey for both the internal and external clients by being fast and easy to deliver information, eco-friendly to reduce the paper and ink and labor. It's much more sustainable. It's green. It's immediate. 
with content delivery that's updated instantaneously. It becomes that virtual guide directing them to where you want them to go. It gives you customer engagement with maybe contests, call to actions, surveys, lead forms, e-commerce. And it's also trackable with full analytics and with Google tracking. So Eli Technology launches the gateway to your mobile marketing studio through a QR code. So Don was mentioning QR codes. So we're gonna be talking a little bit about QR codes. It's cloud-based and allows you to build a robust platform in minutes with no technical expertise. And the beauty is, is once that code is generated, that code remains the same and you can constantly, instantly adjust any of that content. QR codes are everywhere. We see them all over. Just quick little history. They were created in 1994 in Japan for use in the automotive industry for quick response, QR, of parts and to track vehicles during manufacturing. The last two years, we have all been trained on how to use them a little bit more because necessity has made that. Here's this interesting thing. They're expected to increase by nearly 20% in the next three years as adoption across retail, restaurant, and hospitality industries continues to skyrocket. This is why the time for Eli is now. Business deserves a better way to deliver their message everywhere, whether it's to enhance all promotional products, printed marketing information, or training materials. So unlike traditional static QR codes, which are unchangeable and dynamic QR codes where content can be updated, Eli has a patented hyperdynamic software platform that provides a portal offering unlimited delivery of information, marketing support and sales. Eli offers the ability to fully support the updates that are instant video, social media, PDFs, graphics, files, anything that you can think of. This truly creates a great customer experience by being the glue that holds all other codes and URLs in one location. So Eli Technology, they didn't invent the QR code. They just made it simpler, better, and indispensable. Let's take a look at how Eli engages with customers. So it allows you to stand out, to speak to your clients if you want to have video, instant opportunities, information, promote other services or products, drives that customer traffic, enhances your marketing. And again, simple call to actions drive scans by more than 60%. Here are a few additional examples of organizations that utilize our platform currently to tell their story and guide their clients, whether it's been in human resources for recruiting. We're doing a, a lot in real estate, natural products, podcasts, merchandise, and especially in hotel. We're utilizing a tremendous amount in that area. Just remember what Teddy Roosevelt said, no one cares how much you know until they know how much you care. As we know, it's been quite the interesting time for so many people and organizations. Being the best decision that clients make, that's our true North Star. The passion for knowing more, caring more, and giving more needs to be contagious. So this is our ikigai, if you will, which is a Japanese concept for our reason for being. How appropriate for a technology that originated in Japan. It's said that a person truly finds their ikigai when the following four things intersect. You find what you love to do, something you could be great at, that can, you can make a decent living and a good living at, as well as most importantly, make a positive impact on the world. What, what a great philosophy to embrace. So I'm asking you, are you up to a challenge? 
So here's a QR code, which will direct you to my mobile site. What I'd then love you to do is once you scan it, you'll then see the site that comes up, complimentary code. I would love for you to have a complimentary trial code of our technology and provide me with your feedback and how the platform created that true unique customer experience. I'm very thankful of your time and providing me with the gift of your attention this morning. In business, customer service is what you do and customer experience is how you do it. The Eli Technology Platform will transform you and your company by becoming the brand that customers just can't live without while creating a customized journey for their client experience. My ask today of you is to share this information with your business network, especially with realtors, hospitality and tourism professionals, those management companies of limited service hotels who don't have the staff or bandwidth and need assistance with a robust technological platform. I would love to address any questions that you may have. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Fascinating. Actually, it's funny, you know, as a technical person, I never, I don't think I ever knew that QR stood for quick response. So there you <laughs> go, Josh. <laughs> uh, and, and for what it's worth, as a branding person, I love the concept of electronic leash that you use for cell phones. That's uh, that's juicy. You can really use that. Um, and I also appreciate you talk about experiences uh, because with high turnover, a lot of times our employees get very transactional. They don't yes. have enough time to understand why a, a, a company exists or what the mission is, and they don't let it into their heart yet, right? It's just a paycheck. And that makes things very transactional and less experiential. So I think you're definitely onto something here. Uh, my first question though is, why do you care so much? Why is this so important to you? So to me, as Eric opened it up, I'm involved in customer experience and I've been in the hospitality industry and affiliated with customer service and customer experiences my entire life. And seeing what has eroded and what has decayed over the years, Due to situations, this has performed and given an opportunity to bring experiential journeys back. And that's what the customers deserve. They don't deserve waiting in lines forever. If they have the information instantaneously in their hands, they have that. And then again, it creates that better overall experience. So to me, that's always so important. So I take that experiential service and combine it with a technological platform that can deliver it for them. Got it. Uh, Tammy's question is, uh, how do you, or how or where do you advertise and how do you reach your markets? So we have a few folks within the organization. So I, I, I am an affiliate of Eli Technology. So what I do is I, I'm out there promoting it and I'm use, using my sources and my sources are a lot within hospitality, real estate. So that's the market that I'm primarily going after in tourism and such. So being involved in here in Orlando in the Central Florida Hotel Lodging Association, exhibiting with them, talking to them. So getting into this market from that aspect, as well as my contacts for my 30 plus years in hospitality, that's where I've been marketing it to. Others are doing things within the pharmaceutical or the nutraceutical healthcare world you know, looking to do some things. Maybe there might be a trade show coming down the in the past, you know, in the future, maybe in a year or so from now, that's looking to have these QR codes at every one of their booths and 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 having the opportunity to make it a little bit more unique and robust. Right. So you got the opportunity to make this personal. You can take your background, your experience, your contacts, and uh, basically use use your own judgment and how you want to get it out there because it's such a it's a product that goes across all industries, essentially. All industries. I mean, you see, that's what I'm saying. You see QR codes everywhere, but what do they do? You know, we're trying to make them more of that experience rather than just you get the code, you put it there, direct you to one spot, and that's it. That's static. We want you to be able to change it as well as the layers and the way the system has been designed is to create that true journey. Okay. And Eric has a question, and Denny, I will get to you next. Um, does Eli just create the codes or does it handle the link forwarding? 
So what happens, let's say, if to the codes, if Eli goes out of business? Yeah, so the, the, the code itself, that, that's a gateway. The, the QR code is just the gateway into the system. It's all then based on all the URLs and all the information that then we connect it to. So if Eli goes out of business, well, then the whole thing is, which hopefully that doesn't, it's been around for about the last 10 years. So the goal for that is not to go out of business, to continue to thrive. Yet, like many other things, once you create, if the, if the, the gateway is closed and you can't pay the toll anymore, you better find the new bridge. But we want to keep that gap open and, and mine that gap. Makes sense. All right, Danny, you have a question. Uh, not so much a question. I just want to give a little bit of explanatory stuff. Not only was Yale in charge of special events at the Hyatt Regency down in Lake Buena Vista for many, many years, but he referenced that show next year. Well, he's actually in charge of that show. And uh, just to give you some idea of the background of the family too, his father-in-law invented the magnetic strip on credit cards. He also invented the bounce, bond system that's used entirely on Wall Street. He's a very, very creative guy. And he's also very good at, at, at QR codes and that. And, and uh, uh, I guess I've got overall charge of that show when we're doing it next year. It's going to be a show. It's going to be the biggest collector show ever. It's going to be in the convention center in Orlando and Neil's in charge of it. And I tell you, he's, he's got wonderful ideas and wonderful connections. It's absolutely amazing. It's going to be a wonderful thing. Thank you, Denny. So, so uh, yeah, business model wise, um, how does this work? Is this subscription based kind of thing or one time? How, how does, can you describe that a little bit further? Sure, thank you, Josh. So it is subscription based. So from the subscription, it could be on a monthly basis or it could be a one-time annual fee. And then you could utilize it, change it, adjust it, anything you want. But again, with your you have it for that year, or you could just you know go month by month and cancel it. It, it all depends, whatever one's looking to do. Currently, the ones we have, we have some that are on an annual basis, and we have some that are on monthly, and we just invoice them. Makes sense. Uh, Don's question is, you know, he says QR codes are big in Asia. Uh, how fast are you seeing the adoption of QR codes here in the West? Well, the last two years, I think we've all seen them. Everywhere you go, there's QR codes. And now with the our electronic leashes, Josh, the new upgrades that are made to them, you all you, before you needed to sometimes have software in order to scan it and then open it. Now it's instantaneously, it can open it right from your iPhone. And not only that, you could take a picture of that, store it in your camera roll, and then it'll open it from there automatically now too. So the technology that Apple Androids have done has just continued to elevate it. That's why it's gonna to continue to grow exponentially over the next few years. But yeah, it's more it important. Like it's, yeah, go ahead, Josh, I'm sorry. No, no, please finish. It's more important. It's not just about the code. The code's irrelevant. It's what it does once you get there, right? And where it then takes you. So many of them takes you to a page and then it stops. If you have interaction and that's the beauty and that's why we're getting into some you know, major hotels because what's happening, they all have codes from their corporate office, but it's a static information that just puts on what they want you to see. But I, as that guest, no difference. I want to have the security of going into my room like Don was talking about. But then I want to make sure once I'm in there, where do I want to go? What do I want to see? And how can it take me there? So it's all those things that it could connect to. Yeah, maybe instead of QR code, maybe there's something with QE code, you know, quick, instead of quick response, quick experience. Like nice. maybe again, going back and redefining kind of what it means that, you know, what QR code means to people, because to me, it means static. I always thought of it as just a, a way to send someone to a URL, uh, but you're, you're changing my view on this, which, which is interesting. Uh, we are out of time though, so I have to send it back to Eric for our final question. All right, Yale, uh, as a part of the community, what yes, can sir. we as a community do for you? Again, I, I'm so thankful of so many of you within this organization who I've spoken to, sat with, coffeed with, lunch with, so I'm so thankful from that. I just wanna have opportunities to continue to network within your, this group, as well as for you then to expand that to the other contacts that you have. And again, 
I'm primarily focusing on hospitality as well as realtors. So just think about from a real estate aspect, you put this on the sign and all you do is just change it from the back end where you don't have to have all that paper in the tubes that are there anymore. And it's instantly connected to the MLS system as well. So again, lots of connectivity for it. So all right. Any, so connections, connections, connections. That's what it's all about. Perfect. Thank you very much, uh, both Yale and Don. Appreciate you spending your time with us. Uh, next week, we're going to be hearing from Monet Dyson of Dipped in Color. Uh, it is a uh, painting kit and experience for parents and uh, young children to bond over. So I'm looking forward to hearing about that. Uh, don't forget the Bitly survey. I dropped that in the chat one more time. Uh, and uh, everybody, if you want to save the chat, please download that now. Um, especially Don and, and Yale, because you'll have some questions that you might want to go back and visit people over. Um, connect with somebody that you met here today. And then finally, if you haven't already, uh, join us up uh, join us on meetup.com and uh, that's where we will be doing the announcements and don't forget we are meeting in person next week at the UCF business incubator on colonial if you want to do zoom we will have a zoom link uh, that you can join with us there but uh, otherwise come in person and we'd love to see you face to face so thanks a lot and everybody have a great rest of your week thank you thank you so much Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Hey, Eric, do you have a... Uh...